What's up everybody, Coach Megan here. And I'm very proud of myself because I'm seven months pregnant and actually put makeup on and look cute today. And today we're gonna be talking about the three, and I may add more at the end knowing me, but the three biggest ways that you can implement self-care post pageant. So some of you guys have already competed at this point. I'm recording this in the end of June, at the end of June. And wherever you're watching this, whenever you're watching this, even if it's year, years later, this will be super, super relevant to you. And I always wanna make sure that you guys are taking care of yourselves because I know even if I tell you a million times to get off the motivation roller coaster, and if you're inside of our academy, you know how important it is to actually be bored and unmotivated with your goals and dreams. And if you know the secret behind that, you know why that's so powerful. But we still can feel this giant, let down when we're done competing. And so today we're going to talk about that. The first thing, absolutely positively, the most important element of self-care when it comes to post-pageant, dealing with post-pageant blues, post-pageant emotions, is to journal. Now, I know you're going to be like, oh, I hate journaling, especially my high achievers. You never want to slow down enough to journal. I used to hilariously fight about this with my sister all the time because she's like I hate journaling miss Enneagram 3 all the time and a lot of my Enneagram 3s hate journaling and I used to too because I never saw the point but let me give you some steps of exactly the protocol of what you can do to win in journaling and then you'll love it if you have a protocol and a structure right so how do I journal first of all when you look at this blank piece of paper I've talked about this a lot if you look at this blank piece of paper for some people this is really overwhelming for some people, it's a blank canvas, and they're like, oh my gosh, I want to start filling this up. But if I flip this over and I show you this, this side of things, okay, that has a bunch of wording all over it, it's cluttered, our brain actually starts to go into overwhelm where it might want to fill in these gaps and, you know, do these different things, but this blank piece of paper makes us go, God, oh, okay, I want to write a list. I want to fill it up. And so that's just the, naturally the way that our brain works. And so I encourage you, to journal about your experience okay there are naturally some highs there are some lows there are some things that are top of mind that maybe you don't want to repeat again that you do want to repeat again that surprised you so with those five things so what surprised you what would you want to do again what were the highs what were the lows and then maybe a few other things I encourage you to take even 15-20 minutes put on some cinematic music or some instrumental music and just write out what happened. Because kind of like when you go on a vacation or a big trip, I went to Israel, you know, actually 10 months before all this craziness happened in January of 2023. And they encouraged us to journal every single day because we were walking between 10 and 13 miles a day and seeing somewhere between two and, you know, seven different historical biblical sites. And you can imagine that by the end of the day, I could hardly even remember what we did in the morning because there's just so much happening, right? So the fact that we journaled every single night was super, super helpful because they were right. By day nine, I was like, I got nothing. I, I did not remember what we did on day one. Like, absolutely do not count on me for that because I have no freaking clue at all, right? You're sleep deprived, <laughs> all these different things, okay? So journaling about how your pageant went is a really great way to make sure that you repeat the things that you do want to repeat, but you also don't repeat the patterns, the habits, the attitudes, the things that you don't want to carry with you from the way that you handled this past pageant. This will also help you to notice any red flags, green flags, yellow flags when it comes to deciding whether you want to compete in the same organization in the future. You know, fortunately or unfortunately, while most pageants are cut and dry, very black and white, how you score is how you score. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes every once in a while, for the small percentage of time. And again, this is not an accusation, just an observation. But unfortunately, there's there's been a couple surprises, not a lot, but a few surprises for some of my clients that I'm just like, they worked their butts off. They did everything they could have possibly have done. And they didn't make top 15, okay? Or they, they didn't make their expectation of their placement. And I'm sitting there scratching my head like, what? What happened? And it honestly doesn't happen often. Even though pageants are incredibly subjective, okay? A, we know how to coach people into winning. <laughs> and B, like, you know, if you just look at it, it, it's like looking at a sport, right? Like if you do a certain amount of things and you practice a certain amount of shots, like 
you should make the free throw at the end of the day. And so every once in a while, there are just these outliers and you really can't explain something. And I'm always very, very honest with my clients about it. Like if I think that there's something that they could have done, I'm going to tell them. I'm going to tell them ahead of time so they can prepare for it. But every once in a while, like if something happens and they just bomb, which again, doesn't happen often, then I'll tell them and I'll be like, hey, I think it was your wardrobe or hey, I I told you not to wear that dress or whatever, right? And it's usually not like it's it's never just something like that. But there have been one or two instances like this year where I'm just scratching my head. And so then that starts the conversation. Is this the right pageant for you? Because the the second element of self-care that I want to go over is that you should never have to change who you are at your core to win a pageant. That's a massive red flag. Now, can you change how you look? Absolutely. You might need to get some Botox. Yeah, you might. Uh, do in some pageants, people are spending thousands of dollars on dresses and veneers and, you know, changing a lot of things about themselves to to achieve the USA look or achieve the whatever look. Yes. And you can like that or you can hate that, but it's part of the game, right? In the same way that if, if there's a swimsuit component, you're going to have to be fit. And as much as you're passionate about whatever, you can't change the judge's bias that they walk into that pageant with, right? So love it or hate it, we have to play the game enough, but we don't want to lose who we are in the process. And so it's really, really important to in your journaling and your reflection, continue to audit, again, not as an excuse, because what I am absolutely not saying, hear my heart, I am not saying the second you don't win, blame it on the pageant system, blame it on the judges, blame it on the executive directors, blame it on the fact that they they don't like brunettes or they don't like dancers or they don't like this. No, that's a cop out. And that is nine times out of 10, you projecting the shame that you actually feel that you didn't do the work and that you got there in an environment where everybody else outworked you and that made you feel feelings that you didn't want to feel and that made you want to turtle shell and go internal because it was better than actually admitting that you didn't do the work because then you'd have to face you and there's no other excuse and person to blame it on and you don't like those feelings, okay? So that's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about like you went through the academy, you did everything you could do and we're just scratching our heads like, were you watching the same pageant? Because like, I don't get it, right? then it might be time to change systems. And that's perfectly okay. It also, you know, might be good to change systems for just a year. Maybe you want to take a year off entirely. Maybe you want to switch up and do USA or do America or do volunteer or do Petite USA, Mrs. America, whatever, right? There's a million different pageants. But I think it's really, really important to find that right fit for yourself because otherwise you could be trying to fit a square peg in a round hole for a lot of your life And then you start to look inward and question, am I wrong? Is there something inherently wrong with me, which there's not, spoiler alert. You might have to make some adjustments, right? We all have to improve. This is a personal development journey, right? There are things that you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to get uncomfortable. You're going to have to face emotions and parts of yourself that need changing, right? You don't need fixing, but they do need improvement to be up to par and up to the standard where you're going to score well, okay? And there's a reason why most people just stay comfortable and do the, the same thing the rest of their lives and never make changes and don't rock the boat because rocking the boat means you're rocking the boat, okay? And then number three in terms of self-care is I think it's really, really important to assess who is going to be with you in this season and to take time to take time. You don't need to sign up for a pageant the next day. You don't need to sign up for that same pageant the next day. Maybe you do. Maybe that's right for you. But making sure that you surround yourself with the right people, that you are processing this with the right people, people that are for you, that want your goals as much as you do, that want to see you succeed, and that are also going to give it to you straight, speak the truth in love not just speak the truth and tell you how bad you did, and also not just tell you everything was perfect, right? This is the power of mentorship and coaching and having the right friendships even in your life that can say, are you really asking for my feedback or do you just want me to listen? And that's one of the most powerful questions that you could ever ask. P.S. Also in marriage, also in relationships, also in every aspect of your life. Hey, do you want me to listen? 
Or do you want, do you actually want feedback? Do you feel like you're in an emotional place for feedback? And you know what? Like two seconds after your pageant is not the time for feedback. It's not. It's the time to shut up and listen. And so knowing how to even ask for that, maybe in the first week after you're processing a disappointment or processing a giant win, which is fantastic, you probably just want people to listen. And then we're going to get our get our bearings and then we're ready for some strategy. We're ready for the next step. And only you know when you're ready for that. But make sure that you don't bypass the process of the process, the process of the processing, if you will, because your your thoughts are like a ball of yarn and they're constantly bundling up, bundling up, bundling up. If you don't unravel that yarn, then the it's only going to get bigger and you're going to have to unravel an even bigger thing of yarn in the future. And so it's super, super important that um, you take time to process your thoughts, process them with safe people, people that can actually help you get to those goals rather than people that just want to see you stay comfortable because, you know, they call it the 1% for the reason. I hate, I, I mean, I don't hate to break it to you. I'm just breaking it to you. I don't really have any emotions about it, actually. I'm breaking it to you. But there's a reason why they call it the 1%, and it's because 99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to be in the 1%, because it requires radical obedience to your calling, it requires discipline, it requires getting uncomfortable, and it requires not taking everybody with you, because they can't handle it. They would rather eat bonbons and watch Netflix every night, and you are sacrificing an hour and a half in the gym, and drinking your gallon of water, and saying no to the alcohol at the party because it's not in alignment with your macros or your vision because you're underage, even though everybody else is doing it, right? You have to become a better person, and and that is going to rub some people the wrong way. And as you excel and you go into this next season of your life, every single time that you reach this next rung on the ladder, congratulations, not everyone's going to come with you. But when you go to that next level, if you invest in yourself, there will always be a new community of people to wrap you in their arms when you get to the next level. Like it blesses me so much. I could open my phone right now and we have, I don't know, two or three MAO states competing this weekend. And then there's volunteer nationals. And if I open this right now, you can literally see the powerhouse club. Okay. There's the pink text is me, but the rest is people hyping each other up. All these girls posting pictures and sharing their wins, sharing how awesome they're doing, you know, these different things. And it just blesses me because a lot of these women, you know, went to Mastermind together, which is our yearly event in March. If you want to know about Mastermind, DM us on Instagram because, I, again, I'm probably not even going to open up to the public because we let Academy girls go first. I think we're going to have like 50 people this year. <laughs> it's going to be nuts. I got to find a space. I got to find judges. It's just, it's wild. But it's such a blessing. And, you know, they build these rich friendships inside of our powerhouse club and our community because it's it's like-mindedness. And when you find women that even if you are competing against each other you challenge each other in the best ways and you help each other grow like that feeling of growth is irrevocable it's just it's so amazing and it's it's priceless because I was just talking with a client gosh was that this morning that was this morning earlier today like eight calls ago (laughs) and she just got her six-figure dream job as a 21 year old and she's going to be competing for her pageant coming up and she was just like this takes so much pressure off of winning my pageant because now with the things that I've learned and who I've become, like knowing that I attracted this into my life, like this was my goal by 22, 23. And I'm doing this before I even graduate. Like the fact that this came into my life, that they chose me, this is so validating and that I'm getting to live my dreams, change my family's legacy financially. And she's 21 years old, you guys. Like this is amazing. And she's like, well, now miss whatever is just icing on the cake. And I'm like, exactly. This is what it's like to become the kind of person that wins and know that like your state pageant is not validating you. You are walking in valid and worthy already. And then you're like, why would you not pick me? Right. And when you believe that you are worthy, you start taking worthy and esteemable actions every single day, which increases your skill set, which makes you better, which scores you more points in your pageant. And overall, you do better right? But it has to come from an identity level first. And so I just want to make sure that you guys are taking care of yourselves in this season. You know, the post-pageant blues can be a real thing. So, you know, make sure that you take a couple days off, you eat the pizza, you take care of yourself. And then, you know, what's really great again is like, if you 
weren't making this your entire identity, then you also don't need to take 14 weeks gaining the 30 pounds back that you lost and binge eating ice cream and crying your eyes out for 17 days. Like, you'll be okay because this was never the thing that validated your self-worth in the first place. Like, it's okay to be disappointed. It's okay to to say, hey, that sucked. Like, it's okay to say, hey, I, I had a, a different plan in mind for like how this is going to go and I'm, I'm really sad about it. It's okay to have questions sometimes. But knowing that you are still worthy, you are still enough and all these kinds of things and taking time to process, like really process them will help you to move through that season more quickly so that you don't undo all the hard work that you you worked so hard for to get to this place. Because that would be such a shame, right? Like if you undid all the physical hard work and some of the other hard work as well in a month that took you six months to build, that's going to be an interesting cycle to put yourself through mentally, right? And and there's grace. There's grace for every season. There's grace for everything that you go through. So I hope that this blessed you guys today. If you haven't gone ahead and grabbed our free pageant course yet, you guys can go to powerhousepageantry.com slash free course. Go through the modules. Learn from us. I love pouring into you guys. Go ahead and grab that. If you're ready to take a step up and join our academy and be one of the 10 wonderful people that I get to mentor every single month, then you guys can go ahead and apply for that as well at the link below or you can DM us 2025 or comment below if you're on YouTube 2025 and our team will reach out to you. I guess if you're watching this in the future, you can DM or comment 2026 or whatever pageant season it would be in the future. So love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Share this with a friend that needs some healing and needs to hear it today. And I'll see you guys next week.